look, it's me on a pizza box. Oh my God, come on. This is the best thing I have ever made. I love pizza. And since you're here, you probably do as well. Now, as pizza lovers, we know that truly great pizza can be pretty hard to come by. But we also know that even kind of crappy pizza is still quite all right, usually. Which probably explains the popularity of frozen pizza. You know, it's not great, but it doesn't suck. And on a busy weeknight, it can be a lifesaver. And that brings me to the big question. Why have I never made frozen pizza myself? Can it be done and could it be better than the store-bought thing? That is exactly what we're gonna find out today. Let me show you something. <sighs> Do you know what this is? This is a stack of 100 unfolded pizza boxes because one does not simply make frozen pizza at least not on this channel. You see, in my last video, I had a blast making my own brand of Coca-Cola style soft drinks. And half the fun was coming up with a fun logo and label and then getting everything into these fancy branded bottles. This is what I wanna do today, but with frozen pizza, which is a whole lot more complicated, but I think it should be doable. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the birth of my own brand of frozen pizza, which I'm gonna call Don Antonio. Don Antonio, I love it. We got a name, we got a lot of pizza boxes. Now, let's take care of the rest. If we wanna make a great frozen pizza product, like every good business person, we gotta do some market research first. So I hit my local grocery store this morning, headed straight to the massive frozen pizza section and collected a wide variety of specimen, which is when I realized how many there really are. It's actually kind of crazy. And now all I gotta do is taste and review all of them. What a life, am I right? All right, pizza number one, Ristorante. I do remember seeing a lot of their ads when I was a kid. Like, it's not an expensive brand, but it's also not a cheap brand, which is why I think we should taste this first to get a baseline. Packaging doesn't look cheap or anything, but it's also not fancy or cool or whatever. I'd say it's kind of boring. Um, Hmm, I'm realizing it's probably a good idea to wrap them in plastic, probably to avoid freezer burn and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I'm going for spicy salami type of pizzas from each of the brands that I'm tasting because it's my favorite kind and we should taste similar things so we can compare them better. Let's bake this and I'm gonna tell you what I think. Okay, package instructions were a disaster. Apparently it's supposed to take 11 minutes. This was in the oven for 15 and I think it still could go longer. But anyway, if the instructions are wrong, that's on you, Brand. that's on you. Let me get a close up of that pizza for you guys. What the hell? This pizza has no crust. The crust basically doesn't exist. Also the dough is like, even thickness, just like one layer of dough. What's up with that? It does hold its shape well, that's that's a plus. And also the bottom did get a little bit crispy. So gotta give it that. There's something up with that dough. It feels like a softened cracker. The toppings are kind of all right, I guess. I like the spicy salami. Pizza number two, Big City Pizza, whatever that is. So packaging I think is slightly cooler, but it's the same kind of cheap carton. Not a fan of that, honestly. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's considerably thicker and taller. It's what's called a puffy or American style pizza here in Germany. Let's see what it tastes like. What the hell is up with these pizza people? The first one wasn't done when it was supposed to be done, and this one still has five minutes to go, which, looking at the top, I believe, but the bottom has already burned. What the hell? Anyway, let's try a piece. This is a very thick pizza. Oh, no, 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 this is not it. Let me show you. This is what's on my cutting board right now. Unreasonably thick, with a burnt bottom. I guess I gotta take one for the team. Cheers. Okay, to be honest, this is not as bad as I thought it would be. Toppings are fine. This one has a sucuk, which is a Turkish beef and garlic sausage. Pretty good, works well on pizza, meh. I mean, the instructions for this pizza were a disaster. The engineering here is completely and utterly flawed. So 
this is terrible. Pizza number three, die Ofenfrische, which translates to fresh out of the oven from German. The special part about this type of pizza is that it is uh, raw or unbaked is what I'm trying to say. You know, all the other pizzas, they're pre-baked and then you're finishing the baking process in your home oven. But this one, not so much. This is still raw dough. I'm guessing because it's unbaked has like an extra piece of cardboard underneath and also a layer of baking paper. Let's see how it tastes. My oh my, so this one, for a change, worked really well. I mean, check this out. This looks pretty good. This ugh, looks good, still too hot to handle though. Now that's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. It kind of checks all the boxes. Whatever magic it is that makes this possible, honestly, I don't know what to say, but this is a damn good pizza for a frozen pizza especially. Pizza number four, something I cannot pronounce because it's actually Italian. So that's a good sign to me. And it's the representative of a category I'm gonna call hipster pizza. I mean, first of all, look at the packaging. This looks like less produced, let's say, right? We might have to talk about distribution of ingredients here, but overall, this could be good. Let's try. Quick disclaimer, this is the only brand that unfortunately didn't have a spicy salami option. So this is something else. Let's try it. Cheers. This is disappointing. Here's the thing. There are two great things about the pizza. First, I can tell that they actually used pizza flour, which gives the dough a much better like texture and flavor. And then the second thing is, they actually used good cheese. I'm pretty sure this is like actual mozzarella cheese on this pizza, and you can tell. Unfortunately, everything else is pretty bad. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, this is pizza number five. And while this might look like a very normal salami style pizza, this is a vegan pizza. And I am very excited to try a... <laughs> Look at this. The salami legit looks like plastic, but also what's up with the amount of cheese? I'm okay with vegan cheese, but put a little more, won't ya? Come on, how sad is this? I like the bottom, but this, no. I mean, if it's a pizza for kids, call it a pizza for kids, okay? That is not a pizza for adults. I disagree about so many things. Looks wrong. Let's get it over with, cheers. So that vegan salami is an abomination. Never again. But what I gotta give this, this might be the best tomato sauce of them all. Decent crust. I gotta say it's not quite as bad as I thought, but that, no. Pizza number six, which I am very excited about, is the last category, but perhaps the most important one, because this is an influencer pizza. This dude is a German hip-hop artist, if we can call him that. It's also a spicy salami pizza, but that's not important. What's important is the packaging. You see this? Like, this is a person who cares about branding. And right off the bat, not only does this stand out, I think it looks pretty damn sweet. I love the old school vibe with the checkered pattern. Also, you know, mwah, that chef's kiss pose. I don't know how it tastes, but I already love it. And that's what good packaging can do. I hate when people overpromise and underdeliver, but I do not have a good feeling about this. I mean, check this out. It's one of these no crust pizzas. I don't want that, but let's try it first and then we talk about it. Yeah, it's pretty much what I expected. Like when your pizza sounds hollow, no, no, can't be a good sign. Okay, to life. You know what? Again, not as bad as I thought. I take back what I said about the bottom of this pizza. It's actually nice and crispy. I wish there was a good, decent, airy crust. We've seen it today, only like three pizzas ago or something. I do love the very generous amount of stuff on this one. Hmm. From a culinary perspective, there's nothing too interesting about this pizza, but the branding, that's where this pizza had me. This looks awesome. I wanna make a pizza where the packaging looks like this, but that tastes much, much better than this. And for that, I'm gonna need something that I can't make myself. 
Now, the reason that artwork resonated so much with me is of course, because it resembles that classic pizza box design. And do you see this? This is what I imagine a pizza box to look like. And this guy, this guy is just a legend. So if you manage to get your face on a pizza box looking like the, the pizza guy, that would be amazing. My problem though is that um, I can't draw for shit. Like I'm terrible at it. I can design a little bit, but I can't draw. That is not gonna stop me though, because all I had to do is put together a little briefing document explaining what I want and what I need and then take a selfie of me. And then I went on Fiverr, this website where you can get people around the world to do small tasks for you for small amounts of money. I think it's more than perfectly suited for this type of situation. Obviously, they're gonna need a couple of days to make the actual artwork, which should give me more than enough time to do a little bit of recipe testing before I go into frozen pizza mass production. So. See you in a couple of days. One eternity later. Okay, we're in the middle of a crazy heat wave over here, so please excuse my sweaty looks for the rest of this video. Anyhow, a few days have passed and I have made quite a few interesting discoveries about frozen pizza making. So just like you're supposed to do in any emerging business, I started with some prototyping. For that, I made my go-to pizza recipe for, you know, three pizzas and baked one of them just as I would normally, as a control. I'll talk about the recipe in a second, but for now all you need to know is this was a pretty good pizza considering I only have a normal home oven to work with. Then I also made a second pizza, exactly the same, but this one I left completely raw and unbaked, just like the store-bought one I really liked. Then for option number three, I also decided to make a partially baked pizza, which is the classic way to go for frozen pizzas. I only spread some tomato sauce on it, baked that for a few minutes, and then topped it with everything else after par baking. It was actually a little bit tricky to fit them all into the freezer without touching, but I think I made it work. After freezing the pizzas for a few days, I brought them to my parents place for a little taste test. We started with the par baked pizza and I gotta say that worked like a charm. It was easy to handle, it had great even baking results in just 12 minutes or so. The crust was crispy, so was the bottom, great toppings, everything was super satisfying and of course really delicious. The other pizza though, the one I left raw, not quite the same. First of all it got stuck to the pizza tray I froze it in and even though I did manage to remove it, it certainly wasn't fun. It did bake just fine though in about the same time, but the bottom didn't really crisp up very well. In fact, it even got a little soggy and had a few tears in some places. Overall, it still tasted fine, almost, almost the same as the first one, but the texture wasn't nearly as satisfying. I guess I'll have to engage in some corporate espionage to find that out, but for now, as the CEO of Don Antonio's Pizza, I am making an executive decision to work with par-baked pizzas, because that's what our research shows. Now, fortunately for you, over here at Don Antonio headquarters, we are pretty terrible capitalists, which is why I'm now going to give away all our trade secrets and tell you exactly how we mass produce our pizzas. So first, let's make some pizza dough. The first trick here is to use the right flour, which is most commonly sold as pizza flour. That's not a marketing stunt, by the way. It's actually a mix of all-purpose flour with a little bit of durum wheat semolina flour, giving you a slightly crisp crispier and looser crust. That's the stuff they use in Italy. Into the flour, I'll be adding a little salt, about 2% in relation to the weight of the flour we used. Then of course, we'll need to add some yeast to our dough and regular instant yeast will work just fine if you ask me. Mix your dry ingredients until evenly combined and then add water. I'm using 57% water in relation to the weight of the flour. That's actually a little bit on the drier side, but it does help keeping the dough manageable. And then last but not least, the only unusual ingredient I'm adding is one egg white for a batch of five pizzas. Egg white is a great trick to add extra lean protein to your dough, which helps getting it crispy in a regular home oven. You wouldn't need it in a pizzeria style oven, but at home, it's a game changer. Add everything to your stand mixer with a dough hook attached. Start slow, but then just set your timer to 12 minutes and let it rip. More gluten development will help you get a stretchier dough. Now grease a bowl with some olive oil, plop your dough in there, cover it with a lid and let it rise at room temp until doubled in size. We're in the middle of summer here, as I mentioned, so one hour is enough, but in the colder months, this could easily take up to twice as long. 
In the meantime, we can work on the secret signature Don Antonio tomato sauce, which, guys, this one stays between us, all right? I like starting this with crushed canned tomatoes. They have a bit of extra texture still left in them. It's super important to season them with sugar. It really brings out the fruitiness in my opinion. Also some salt, of course, and then I made another executive decision. Don Antonio's Pizza will use a little MSG in its tomato sauce. This is gonna disrupt the market, guys. Now, I like a little fresh garlic in my sauce, but not too much. Instead, I like supplementing it with a little bit of dried garlic powder, which is much, much milder. Then I figured a small touch of smoked paprika would help, since we're missing the slight smokiness of a real Neapolitan oven. And for herbs, I'm gonna add a lot of dried oregano, which is essential for that classic industrial pizza flavor to me. And another secret ingredient, fennel seeds. Especially for meaty pizzas, I think this one is a really cool addition. One last drizzle of good olive oil, and the number one trick here is to mix everything with chopsticks. No, actually, I'm just kidding. I have no idea why I did that. It actually was really inconvenient. Anyway, there you have it, delicious fresh tomato sauce. Now I'm also gonna make a quick basil sauce. And remember, this is not a pesto, it's much, much simpler. It's literally just a whole bunch of basil with a few glugs of olive oil, a small pinch of salt, and an optional little squeeze of fresh lime. Blend those and you should get a bright green, super fragrant basil style dressing that unlike fresh leaves of basil will actually keep its color, shape, and taste even after freezing. So by now our dough has doubled in size. I'm dividing it into five equal pieces, each weighing about 250 grams, which is my preferred amount of dough for a freezer-friendly pizza with a diameter of 27 centimeters. You wanna get those rolled up into nice and taut balls of dough, coat them very thoroughly in olive oil and rest them in a covered tray or box for at least another 15 to 30 minutes to relax and rise a second time. In the meantime, you can prep a few round pizza pans which you also want to grease with olive oil. Working with these is going to be a huge help throughout the entire process, from shaping the pizzas all the way to freezing. You'll see in a second. I like to get a little bit of semolina or cornmeal and use that to dust my working surface before rolling out the pizzas. They get a little more of that handmade pizza feel this way. Now my pizza skills are actually pretty terrible, so I'm not gonna bother going into much detail here, but you know, you just stretch them out with your hands and some good old gravity first, leaving a nice little crust, and then add your dough to the pizza pans and try to evenly stretch everything out to fill them. This, it's a, this is a pretty forgiving process. Doesn't even look that bad when you're done. Now spread a little tomato sauce on each one, not too much, and then with your oven preheated to 250 degrees Celsius or 1 billion degrees Fahrenheit, par-bake the pizzas for exactly five minutes. The crusts should puff up but not be crispy or golden yet, and the tomato sauce will slightly dry up. Let me show you something here though. Notice how the bottoms are already slightly golden and crisp? The trick here is to bake your pizzas on the very bottom of your electric oven, which is where most of them will have their heating element. Holy crap, my oven is really dirty. You are definitely not supposed to see that. For cheese, you definitely wanna go for low moisture mozzarella. Low moisture is the key here. Do not use the big briny wet balls. They taste great, but they will definitely ruin your pizza. Over here, I was actually able to find these tiny dried mozzarella balls, which are perfect to work with for evenness, but they also melt a little slower in the oven because they're actually kinda chunky. Now, while that mozz is here to give us gooey, stretchy goodness, the only other cheese Don Antonio will be using is pre-grated Parmesan. Yes, I agree with Argusia here. It just helps achieving that funky but somewhat industrial pizza cheese flavor. For toppings, you can obviously do whatever you want. I'm gonna go for my favorite type of pizza diavola with spicy salami, sliced black olives, red onions, and of course, a few dabs of our fresh basil sauce. Now, come Come on, don't tell me this doesn't look pretty damn promising. I was originally gonna make them all the same, but then Don Antonio's head of social media called in and said that we should definitely do a Hawaiian pizza with pineapples to trigger the internet and generate more interaction on social media. So that's exactly what we're doing, guys. I just like messing with you. Even the high quality prosciutto we're using probably won't save us from the wrath of the pizza purists but that's okay. Finally, all we had to do was put those pizzas in the freezer, which is where we pretty quickly ran into some
some space problems. I mean, newsflash, home freezers are not made for frozen pizza mass production. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of stressed out by the fact that we had to squeeze them into the freezer this hard and to stack them on top of each other. Is this gonna squish them or something? Because that would be really, really sad. Literally, the survival of the entire brand depends on this, so fingers crossed. So the pizzas are in the freezer right now. Let's hope everything goes according to plan. In the meantime, I do have some very good news though. The drawings of my face in pizza box style, which I ordered on Fiverr a couple of days ago, all came in and we got some pretty interesting results. Let's check what we got. So this is option number one. It only cost $9, super cheap. It came in first and yet I think it looks amazing. It's it's almost perfect for me. Maybe it is perfect. It, it has everything. The facial expression is awesome. It definitely looks like me. I got the hat, I got the bow tie, I got the okay hand. Everything's awesome. I love this one. Okay, so this is option number two. It cost $28, so a little bit more pricey. And I know what you're thinking. It looks a little bit strange, but uh, let me stop you right there. This is actually exactly what the artist promised. He has a signature style, and I ordered a picture of me in that signature style. Um, I just don't think it's a good match for the brand. So unfortunately, I think I'll have to pass on that one. Okay, so this is option number three, also for $28. And this one, I mean, while the artist did everything I asked for, it's just not my favorite. I don't know exactly what it is about this one, but it's just not as good as number one still. So I don't know, I don't know. Not my favorite. Then we got option number four for $51, getting pretty expensive over here. And this one, hmm. So what I do like is that the artist didn't just trace the selfie that I sent in, but instead he actually like drew me. That's cool. It's a little bit heavy on the beard maybe. And overall, that cartoon style is pretty cool, but it's just not that vintage look that I'm going for. I want that old school feel and this is just not it. Then we got option number five, coming in at a whopping $67, but I gotta say, I think this one's worth the money. Um, I love the drawing, I love the facial expression. I really like that this artist draw like a full, no, a half body portrait of me. And you know, I love the little towel that's flying in the wind and stuff like that. That's all really cool. I think this one really hits the spot for me, however, However, it's still a little bit too cartoony. It's not that old school feel. So after spending way too much money on Fiverr, my conclusion is that I still like the first one the best. The cheapest one, the fastest one, it only costs $9, but I think it just hits the spot. It's exactly what I want for the Don Antonio brand. I think I got this from here. All that's left to do now is let's make a logo. Now, for the actual Don Antonio pizza box design, again, I really wanted to lean into that classic delivery pizza box aesthetic. I didn't want it to look fancy, but I also didn't want it to look cheap, just kind of old school. And with the drawing I got, this was actually super easy to achieve. Designing the logo didn't take more than 20 minutes or so. So this is the logo. I think it turned out pretty much perfect. Like, as you can see, it's a little bit small. I wish it could be bigger, but obviously all we have to work with is an A4 size of paper. So that's what it's gotta be. We also do have these though, which is a little bit of extra decoration for the sides of the pizza box. And you know, I think Without further ado, I should just put one of these together and see how everything looks. Look, it's me on a pizza box. Okay, I love it. Now all I gotta do is do this, maybe not a hundred, but at least four more times because I do have five pizzas in the freezer. And then we're gonna be a lot closer to our final goal. Okay, so this took about one hour. Not too bad, considering everything. I definitely did get quite a bit faster. Now I could just, you know, take my pizzas, put them straight into the box, but we're not quite there yet. There's one little problem we really gotta solve. Here they are. Let's check everything worked. I mean, looks like a frozen pizza. And won't you look at that? See, like it comes off completely effortlessly and ooh, we have a nice crispy bottom. 
it made it. No stickage whatsoever. Okay, let's get to that last step we need to take care of, which is sealing these guys in some kind of like plastic thing, which I do have a solution for, at least in my head. Now we just have to see if it actually works. Let me put these back into the freezer first. Okay, so here's the deal. This pizza, oh my God, I really have to work fast. It's almost thawing in this blistering heat that we have today. So we need to get this sealed and my solution is garbage bags. Step number one is actually grabbing a little circular piece of baking paper that I prepared. Um, and we're gonna put the pizza on top of that. And we're doing this because we care about our consumers and we don't want them to have to get out an extra piece of baking paper. It's a little bit weird because I'm the only consumer, but you know, I, I respect myself. Now let's get to the actual fun part, the garbage bag. So we're gonna put the pizza into this bag, kind of like up against a flat side of the bag, if that makes any sense. Then we're gonna turn it over. Then we wanna grip this nice and tight and just kind of twist it so we get this type of situation. Now we're gonna grab this tool, which I forgot what it's called in English right now and I don't have time to look it up because my pizza is thawing. And then, miniature flamethrower. I mean, it's it's not perfect. It actually has a little bit of a hole at the bottom, but that's, that's all right, like, come on. At least for version 1.0, I think this is a win. And now we can actually get this into our beautiful pizza box, come on, come on, this looks kind of cool. And close things up. Huh? What do you say? I'm pretty excited about this. Back into the freezer before you explode. After all that hard work, I mean, honestly, I gotta say, just taking this out of the freezer already feels incredible. I love this, this feels so good. And I haven't even taken out the pizza yet. I'm just talking about the box. Honestly, this, this is so good. It feels like somebody just brought this to you. So here are a competitor's pizza boxes without the pizza, but look. You can just tear them up like that. This just shows that these people do not even respect their own product. Now this pizza, you try tearing up that pizza box, good luck. You will never be able to tear up a Don Antonio's pizza box. And now let's look inside. Oh, oh my God, come on. Look at this perfectly packaged frozen pizza. Huh? Come on, come on. <laughs> this is the best thing I have ever made. Not just on this channel, maybe in my entire life. It's almost too beautiful to open it up, but I'm gonna open it up like I would open any random pizza, which is savage mode. Just tear it open. Oh, oh, so good. And oh my God, thank you, Don Antonio, for including baking paper in your pizza. I'm gonna put this in the oven now, and if my calculations are correct, in about 12 minutes, we should have an amazing, delicious pizza. Will you please take a look at this pizza, this marvel of a pizza. I mean, for a frozen pizza, this looks absolutely gorgeous. The crust is nice and golden brown, it's crispy. As you can clearly see, this pizza is not even a little bit soggy. I can wear it as a hat if I wanted to. Well, now I got some authentic, fresh semolina in my hair. <laughs> Free bonus for you. Courtesy of Don Antonio. I should definitely be putting this here. I mean, I do need some exposure after all. Anyway, let's try a piece of Don Antonio's pizza. I gotta say, considering I just made a frozen pizza mass production in my studio, it's a little bit surprising that I don't have a pizza cutter, isn't it? Well, that's life. I actually love that this pizza came with its own sheet of baking paper. It's like one of these understated little conveniences that makes a brand feel truly luxurious. Look at this. It's not the thinnest pizza in the world, but hey, it's a frozen pizza. If you make it too thin, it's gonna be problematic. How did I even get it this thin without getting soggy? I don't know. Actually, I do know, but I didn't do it on purpose. Doesn't matter, let's try. 
Cheers, guys, to Don Antonio. Mm. Look, I'm not just saying this for the video. I swear this is the best frozen pizza I ever had. Maybe I have some kind of bias going on because I have just been working on this for over a week, but it's just so good. Did you hear the crisp? Oh, I just got some of the basil and it's delicious. It actually tastes like basil. It doesn't taste like pesto because I think pesto and pizza, hmm, controversial choice. Basil on pizza though? Yes, please. This is a great frozen pizza, but you know what? Don't take it from me. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, bien, benvenuti a la trattoria Don Antonio or something like that. <laughs> Your self-made pizza. Yeah. Wow. My God. It's the best crust so far that I've eaten. The crust is so good. Like you don't get that kind of crust in a frozen pizza normally, mm -mm. do you? Wow. How did you do this? I think it's the mix of using the right flour and adding one egg white to the dough. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, mm. it's crispy, mm. but it's not dry, is it? I don't know. Did you use another oven or something? No, it's, it's like... just our regular home oven that we've been using for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, if you needed any proof, there's been that. So far, 100% success rate with tasters. There's some marketing for you. 100% of people who have tasted Don Antonio's pizza say it's the best frozen pizza they've ever had. <laughs> ah, grazie mille, Don Antonio. This was awesome. Now, if you're wondering what happened to the pineapple pizza, well, two of those are still in my freezer right now. I'm kind of loaded up on pizza for the next week or two, but once I feel like having pizza once again, I'm definitely gonna taste the Hawaiian pineapple pizza and put that on my Patreon for you guys. So let me use that opportunity to thank everyone who's supporting me there. You guys are really helping me to run this channel and do crazy stuff like this. Thanks a million, grazie mille, as Don Antonio would say. I had a ton of fun making this. I hope you did as well watching this. And with that said, hope you're subscribed. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video.